here. I love this boat, seriously. I just cruised it like 28 knots the whole way and it was just beautiful. It's not too bad. It's a little bit from the south, southeast, I think. So now I'm just standing around. I'm using avionics on my phone and what's on my GPS here because they both say something different. And I'm just having a bit of a look around some ground here. But I think what I'm going to do, it's a good day for it, but I don't really have much time before the sun starts to go down. I want to kind of get set up. Um, yeah, it's a few nice looking, there's a bit of a, a ledge that runs along here. Bit of a primal concrete ledge. And um, it drops from 17 down to 20. So I'm just having a bit of a look. I actually don't have anything rigged up. I've, I've got a skippy there. I'd, I'd drop a snap bait. I just drove over a good ledge before. I've got a snap bait there rigged up, but I've, my skippy is frozen solid down the back. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop because I want to see which way this wind's going to blame me anyway. So I normally just go in neutral and then just sort of get a feel for which way the boat's going to drift. While I'm doing that, I'll get this skippy out and I'll whack him in the belly pot there so he can defrost a little. And I'll whack those back up on there too. They can defrost a bit too. So now I'm just going to sort of drift a bit. It feels like it's got a bit of, quite a bit of south in it. I feel like I'm going to drift that way. Normally you got to give it. Yeah, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute, just to sort of get an idea on your GPS which way you're drifting. Normally I can tell by which way the boat swings. If the boat swings this way, it means the wind's blowing into this canopy. This canopy acts like a sail and it'll spin the boat and drift that way. So I can already tell it's starting to go southerly. And the GPS tells the same story. So I'm going to motor in, back in here. I might give that ledge a bit of a shot later after dark, once my skippy's defrosted a little bit. But for now, I'm going to head back in a little bit shallower, which is just over here. And I'll get set up. I'll show you when I get in there what it looks like on the bottom. This is what I'm looking for here. See that? That's bait. So I'm just doing a few circles around looking for some bait. And now I've found the bait. So now I'm just going to sort of head in to where 16 rises up to about 14. And I'm going to anchor in the roundabouts of that ledge there, which shouldn't be too far in this general direction here. starting to come up a bit now to 15 yeah 14 there you go so that's the ledge there so i'll zip back around to where that bait was and i'll anchor in that general area and hopefully oh, so the anchor's down but the wind hasn't really swung hasn't swung me around on the anchor yet but in the meantime i've got an abrolis bull whip here straight out the back with that while the boat's drifting around we're still going to move around a little bit here and there but it always pays to just have something out the back and be ready because sometimes the snapper will hear the noise of the boat and they'll come up to have a look and it pays to have a plastic rigged up ready to go it pays also not to have your line wrapped around the real handle and stuff as well because if you do hook up it's not going to end well for anyone cool so i'm pretty happy with how we ended up the ledge is pretty much just over here i can't really see it sometimes you can see the water here but here is actually quite reefy it's not my general ledges are a ledge that drops off on the sand here it's a ledge that drops onto like sort of platy coral and some more fluffier sort of bottom so it's a bit harder to distinguish but i know the ledge is not far over here maybe 10 15 meters max just behind me over here my belly's going to run out that way hopefully if the currents were still running that direction or it might be awkward and the billy might be running that way which will be a real pain in the ass but we'll deal with that when the time comes okay first bait just half a mealy pilchard sardine whatever you want to call it see i've got hook exposure there the point's coming through just through the eye back in through the meat good point exposure and i'll just whack that out that i'm going unweighted i'm going to try unweighted to start off with and just get a feel for how the current's running and then I, if I feel like I need to um, put a little sinker on, I'll go with like a little tiny ball. But for now, actually the current seems to be literally non-existent, which is not really ideal. Um, no run, no fun, like they always say. 
Let's see how we go. It helps when you rig your rod up as well that you make sure your line goes underneath the underneath the bail arm before you rig it all up. Rookie mistake right there. We're all good. We're back in business. I'm casting forward of the boat because I know the current is running this way and that'll give it a chance to sink and sink down before it gets here. As the current takes it, it'll sink down, sink down before the line pulls tight. And then by the time it's out the back where I want it, if it does come back up in the water column, it's traveled all of this distance and pretty much flowed all the way along the edge here, gone down and then come back up again. And then I'll wind it in and cast again and see how we go, whether I decide to put a sinker on or not. For now, I think I'm okay. So now, I'm going to wind this soft plastic in and cast this back out as well. So I'll just twitch this back in slowly. You don't get carried away with these plastics, just go slowly, slowly. Sometimes you can get too carried away and go too fast with them. This one's really got a 1.8 TT head, so it's really lightly weighted, so it's just going to dance pretty much mid-water, which is what I'm looking for. If there's a bit of current running, it takes quite a while for these to sink. They kind of do like a real slow sink, which is perfect. And while I got this up, I'm gonna whack a bit of scent on it. A bit of strikers, strikers lure scent here. I'll just smear a bit of that. The beauty of these abrolis um, lures is all these ribs. The scent goes in there and it just stays in there, it doesn't come back off. So. Yeah, that lure probably still stinks from last time but so then I'll just whack this one out give it a good cast right out and just let that sink nine times out of ten if the snapper are hitting it they're gonna hit it on the fall they like it as it falls so now I'll just whip my belly sit back and wait and see what we can make happen oh I'm in already over here hang on what is this oh I don't even think I don't I don't think this is a skippy. Wow. That didn't take long at all. This was the very first bait. Like I said, it was just, I cast it forward. It was just making its way over this way. I was keeping my eye on it and it was pretty much just level with the boat behind here and it's got slammed by something here. I'm pretty sure it'll be a snapper. I don't think this is a skippy. It's putting in a bit too much for a skippy. Skippy, you can tell they got da, 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 they got a real vibration sort of fight to them. I feel like this one's a snapper. It's not huge, huge. It's actually putting in alright. Might be bigger than I think. Oh, it's actually got quite a bit of weight to it. It's a good snapper. It just doesn't realise it's hooked yet. It's decent. Yeah, his size is probably perfect. Beautiful little pinky. He'll go. Fifty nine centimeters. Perfect eating size pinky. Lovely. All right, I'll get the hook out of him. All right, so I've got a little forty gram snap bait. These things are beautiful. Forty grams. They're just pretty much designed to just be dropped at anchor like this. Just drop them under the boat and just let them dance just off the bottom. Being the heavier ones will sort of just sink and just go up and down with the boat. But being the lighter ones, 40 grams, the boat will lift them and then they'll flutter around a bit. They're just gonna flutter around a lot more than what the heavier ones are. Just a little bit smaller, a little bit more subtle presentation for, um, you know, underneath the boat like this. In the deeper water, fair enough, you need the bigger ones because you need that weight to get you down. But in the shallows down here, 
Look at that, fillet of skippy. 40 grand snap bait. I'm just gonna drop this one over the side right here. Maybe, if I can get it all untangled. It's not looking pretty. There it is. So I'll just let that go to the bottom. I'll just let that drop to the bottom and then I'll wind it up maybe one turn. And then I'm just gonna let that dance there. And that will get jewies. If anything's gonna get them, this will get them. As you can see here, there's my snap bait right there. Going to the bottom so I can see it's dancing just off the bottom, right where you want it. Exactly where you need it to be. Seems like it's going under the boat here, so what I might do is bring it around and drop it on that side. So I've established that the current's not that strong, my muley's gonna sink. I've just pumped a bit of barely there, so what I'm gonna do is cast this one out the back this time. Because that cloud of barely that just went from the pot is gonna go and slowly drift down, drift down, drift down. And if I cast this out here, my muley's gonna be drifting down in that cloud of barely that I just pumped a few minutes ago. So if old man snapper swimming up the Burley Trail, he'll come across that muley just drifting down like that. So there's lots of little pieces, and then that one big piece, he just won't be able to resist himself. Which reminds me, and I'll also wind in this plastic again and get this going again. Twitch. Just twitch these back. You never know when they're gonna get hit on the twitch on the way back. But I'd say nine times out of 10, they get hit on the fall if they're gonna get hit. They generally get hit on the fall of the plastic. Oh, here we go. Oh no, dropped. Devastating. All right, they're here, they're here. That was a good fish. That was the right one. Quickly get another bait back out again. The sun is just going down as you can see over there. Prime time, prime time. That was the big one I'm come for. I've got dinner. Now I just really like to see a big one. I really suck this winter if I'm honest with people. It's been a tough winter. The weather's been not playing fair. I haven't really caught any big ones this winter. So it'd be nice if I can actually get one. My drag was a bit tight there, but it shouldn't really matter. Oh no. Well that sucks. That was the fish we came for. Right there. But that's alright, means they're here. Give it a bit of barely. I'm doing this nice and quietly. Like I said before, don't make too much noise. Just bang. I like to just sort of twist. Just twist and grind rather than bang, bang, bang. Just keep it sort of quiet. If you get too noisy, you can scare things off. Here we go. Yep, good fish. Good fish. Hopefully I can stay connected. I knew they were there, you could... That last bite... I've been seeing them on the sounder. They're all over the bottom of the sounder. I don't think there's... They're not snapper down there low. But the skippy I think had just been destroying my little snap bait there. I was hoping for a sneaky jute. Hoping for a sneaky jute. But I'll be happy with a nice pink. I've already got that nice one in the in the esky there anyway, so I'm happy. I've got my dinner sorted. Actually, I might even do a catch catch and cook for my lunch tomorrow. Lee's back. Lee's been in Bali for the last two weeks. Oh, oh, I'm in on this side now. Look at this. Oh no, now we've got issues. Now I've got a double hook up. The snap bait's hooked up. I told you I've seen stuff on the sounder, and now the snap bait's gone hooked up. Yeah, so Lee's been in Bali for the last two weeks. Living, living large he's back late tonight so I might do a bit of a cook up tomorrow with Lee for lunch get on the beach or something I don't know what that is and I'm going to concentrate on this one because this one's a light line this is only 20 pound that's 30 with a pretty heavy leader so oh, it looks like off whatever that was this one's a pinky for sure I could just tell by the hit, it was a really pinky style hit. So what I did there was actually probably a bit different to what I normally do. I pumped the burly and had a good cloud at the back of the boat and then I just lobbed my bait there with the cloud and then I just pulled a couple of, probably pulled 
I don't know, meter at a time, I probably pulled off maybe 15 meters a line and just threw it in the threw it into the water there and just let that float back sort of slack lining it on the way back down. And old mate here swam into the burly and couldn't resist himself. Oh he's hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Hopefully I can get him out without losing him here. Yeah, nice fish. There you go. Snapper, simple as that. It's really not hard. Get some barely, get yourself in the right area, barely up, and just lightly weighted baits floating back down. You can see the hooks right in the corner of his jaw. I'm gonna get that out. It should come out pretty easily. Or not. And he can go straight back in because he's gonna swim. No problems at all, he's fresh. Oh, yeah, he's gone. All right, let's see what we've got on here. I'm still in here. I don't know if I'm in or not. There was definitely a decent fish on here before. No, it's gone. Oh, that's a bit of a shame because they had a half decent fish on here before too. What have we got on here? Something on. What's this? Oh, this one. Might be a skippy. See that? That's really skippy like. That's what's been smashing all my baits over here. Yeah, this one's a skippy. That's all right though, because I'll keep him. Oh no, he's a little pinky. There you go, a little baby pink. A little baby pink. He's fresh, the hook's right there, should be easy release for you, mister. Oh, and again over here. Here we go, and again. No, it's only a smaller one, but it's a pinky all the same. The bites has come on, the sun's kind of just gone down. You can see, the sun's just gone down, and the bites just started to come on. This thing's dead, so I'm going to take it off. It gives me a bloody headache wearing that thing on my head. Some people have said they don't like head cam. Other people have said they don't like looking at my head, so... Fair enough. Yeah, this one's only a small one. So if anyone's got any questions about catching pinkies, I'll do my best. Put a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them, but... I'm no expert, I just do what works for me. You guys can probably seen it a million times in my videos. It works for me, it'll probably work for you as well. But other people do it differently to me. I'm surprised that soft plastic hasn't got one so far yet. It's got a couple of little taps, but it hasn't actually landed a fish yet. He can go back, I'm gonna whack his a little skippy this time. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna put this fillet of skippy and let that wash waft down, see if I can see what happens. I feel like I might be able to get a big one on that. Or not, who knows? Beautiful. Lovely. Just delightful. Oh, here we go, the plastic. The plastic, the plastic. Yeah. There you go, that's the Abrolos. I knew it was going to get hit sooner or later, it just had to. This is a half decent fish too. I'm on a bit, heavy, bit, bit heavier gear here, this is 30 pound. It's kind of um, come here gear for snapper really, not very sporting at all. I don't think it's very big either, just quietly. He's alright though. Oh, oh, the other one just got slammed. My fillet of skippy just got tonked. Oh, I've got to land this guy because I've got a funny feeling that one's going to go off in a minute. There he is. Oh, mate, there. He's got the Abrolos set in his mouth. Get him off, he can go, he can go back. 
Okay, he's off. See you, mate. I've got a funny feeling my fillet of skippy just got pounded there and it's gone. Almost convinced that that's what's happened there. Alright, you know what? I've had enough. I've got a fish that I needed. I'm going to wind this in and I'm going to go over to that ledge I sanded on the way in. I've got one fillet of skippy left on there and we'll go for a one drop miracle, see if we can come up with something over here on this ledge. I don't think it'll last long. Just winding up the old boomer here. So love this anchor. It just, it always comes back. Sometimes it pulls the pin, nine times out of 10 it doesn't. But it's steady, it's reliable, and it always comes back. No more getting stuck on the reef and doing circles trying to get your anchor out of the reef. This thing's just incredible. Real game changer, the pin pop that time. All right, so now I'm gonna circle back over to this little ledge that I found when I first pulled up here, and I'll go one drop with this fillet of skippy I've got and see what we can turn up, if anything. I don't care, I'm happy now. I've got a fish, I've caught a few fish. Got one for my lunch tomorrow. We'll go over here and see if we can't. Just put the icing on the cake. Wow. Pretty decent ledge here, eh? Oh, too fast, too fast. Slow down, Scotty. Yeah, I'll give it this drop. And I'm heading in. But I'll do a catch and cook tomorrow. Um, like I said, Lee's home and I'm off tomorrow. So I'll do a catch and cook with that snapper I caught. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Let's hook up here. Oh, I'm getting bites straight up. That was just a sign off because I can see the GoPro battery getting flat. Oh, yeah, I'm getting slammed here. Let's see, let's see if we can hook up something here. I might have to turn this GoPro off. Until I hook. Is it the battery or is it the card? That's no, the battery. Yeah, fish on. I just switched the GoPro off to try to conserve battery. And almost instantly, I hooked up to what seems like a half decent fish. It's not huge, huge. I'm just gonna go slow on it in case it's a dewy. Because it's, if it's a dewy, I feel like it's gonna be an undersized one. What do we got here? Oh, it's a little pinky. It's a little pinky. Got a little snap bait in his mouth. All right, I'm out of here. This guy can go back. That was my last bit of bait anyway, my last. How's this moon? Big full moon. Traditionally not the best fishing winter right tonight. I'm just taking a minute just to appreciate. Just kicking back. I've just been cruising for the last 10 minutes. Thought I'd just stop. Taking a bit of this moon. Awesome. I just love being out here. So blessed to be able to do this on a Thursday night too. Straight after work, like, how sport are we? Cool. Good morning. I'm down here this morning with Salty. Um, I just grabbed a coffee. Lee had a really late flight last night and he slept in a bit this morning, so I didn't want to wake him up. So I thought I'd come down for breakfast for something different. I brought the dog down for a bit of a run. Grabbed myself a coffee. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm getting my little stove. Just put my coffee down here. I'm just getting my little stove warmed up here. I just bought a fillet. I've got one fillet off of that snapper last night. Um, the other one I left in the fridge. Um, Lee will probably have that for lunch later on when he eventually wakes up. Whatever I'm cooking up on the beach or cooking up on the boat, and I just want to keep things simple, I'll just go with this stuff. The Tandako, lightly seasoned fish. It's all you need. 
um, I'll just crack the bag a little bit and um, whoops so all I do just get a bit of this tip it into the bag here I'm not even going to use the whole packet because I've only got like one fillet in there oh this is not working is it how about that okay so I just tip a bit of this into the bag like that probably just half of that will do I'll save the rest of that I'll just leave this in the bag with my um, stove there it's pretty simple now just shake it around in the bag make sure you feel it gets nice and covered pretty simple rip him out and there you go beautiful crumbed fillet I'll just whack him on there done and there's another little bonus piece here for Soldy there. let those cook up for a bit I'm gonna sit down here in the sun because it's pretty bloody cold this morning sit down in the sun with my coffee kick back just enjoy the view what you doing stop chasing birds Salty likes to chase the birds. Now this little piece is already nearly cooked. I didn't bring any oil with me. Normally I bring a bit of butter or some oil, but I didn't bring it today. Ah, it's pretty hot. Probably should have bought a fish flip as well. That's cooking up alright though. That'll be nice, beautiful little breakfast there. Little snack. Oh, well, there you go. Beautiful piece of fish right there. It's fresh as a daisy. Came out of the ocean last night. Eating it this morning. Beautiful. Doesn't get much better than that. Oh, the wind's just kind of swung around from the north. It's actually got a little bit... It's got a bit rougher in close there as well now. Probably made the right choice not going out this morning. Mm, that's delicious. Juicy. Just don't overcook your fish either, guys. Just watch it. I like to put a knife through it. Just keep inside and watch it till it's just starting to get translucent. Take it off because it'll still keep cooking even when you take it off. Here I am here using a coffee cup lid as a plate. Salty, come here. Yeah, from your fish. Gentle. Gentle. Good boy. Whoop. Nice. If you like the video, stay tuned. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Yew!